So you think we have achieved Dr. King, King's dream of equality? And if not, how close are we to achieving it? Mm. The dream of equality, definitely not. And I would say, unfortunately, I think we have gone further back from the dream than we have gone forward, especially in the past couple of years with the way things have shifted in this country. So mm -hmm. what do we need to do first to achieve King's dream? I think it starts with remembering that all people are human, right? And we think of King as a civil rights leader, but first and foremost, you have to have human rights, right? And be regarded as a human being. And I actually, sadly, I want to say that right now we are debating whether certain people are actually people mm -hmm. in this country and in this world. And it's very evident in the way that we're treating people. And so we have to go back to that sense of shared humanity that was the underpinning of his dream. And then we have to be willing, as they were in the 60s, to give up something in order that others might have something, right? One of the big gains of the civil rights movement was that white people with money gave up a lot of their privileges, actual privileges that lived in the world, like I'm going to go to this better school and I'm going to eat in this better restaurant. I'm going to live in this better neighborhood, at least on paper. They were willing to give up those privileges so that others might have access. And I'm not even sure that we are in a place as a country anymore about what are you willing to give up so that somebody else might be able to sit next to you. I think we're more in a, if it ain't affecting me, maybe I'm not going to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's one of the biggest steps back from King's dream that you could take because he had that dream of the beloved community. And I'm not sure we're there yet. I'm seeing a country more divided more individualistic, more narcissistic than it's been in a while. How do you think we could try to unify uh, America as a nation? Mm -hmm. I think America has to begin to rectify its very deep history of hatred. America was built on the hatred and degradation of black and brown peoples. And, and it is ingrained then in the DNA of, I'm not even gonna say America, I'm gonna say the United States, just let's keep it here. Um, and if we don't rectify what the history of that has done to the peoples who landed here and the people who were here already, then I don't think we actually can get there. So we need to stop the disillusionment that we're living in a meritocracy. We need to realize and quantify the inequalities that are in the country. And we need to think about how are we really going to bridge these real gaps, which means where are we going to find, what are we going to put our money towards? We're going to put our money towards fighting these other countries that are not fighting us, or are we going to put our money towards our schools and our communities and the people who are living right here, right? That's the kind of shift I think it's going to take. And it's going to mean that we're going to have to give up some of our westernized and Americanized notions that as long as I am okay, it's okay. And that means really people coming to a different shared understanding that if I'm drowning, you're not swimming either. And I don't know that we get there. That starts with inviting people into dialogue. Goes back to some of the roots of the 60s where we didn't want to live in segregated communities because they fostered inequality and misunderstanding. But now without the legislation, the reality is we live in segregated schools, segregated communities, we go to different supermarkets. We don't see people of difference very much in this country. So we got to bridge some physical and emotional gaps, some financial gaps, before we can even start to live out King's dream. And that's hard. How do equality and freedom of speech relate? Mm. They are, they are deeply related, right? Because freedom of speech, first of all, equality and freedom are related. So if you're not in a place of equality, you don't have freedom of anything, right? Inequality is also the lack of freedom because it means you actually can't do what somebody else can do. That means you're not free. Freedom of speech is, is a tricky one because freedom of speech, people think that means you can say whatever you want to say. I don't believe that's what freedom of speech really is or should be. To me, freedom of speech is the right to speak your mind so long as you're not dehumanizing another human being. 
And that's where freedom of speech and equality come really into play. Because in a state of inequality, you've got people who are allowed to speak and people who are not. You've got people whose voices carry and people who don't. And so inequality is a lack of the freedom of speech. I actually can't speak for myself. And even if I did, I'm not gonna get as far. But when you have equality and you match it with freedom of speech, then when I speak up, my voice is carrying as far as anybody else's. I, I think they're really interesting. And what you'll notice whenever a country is trying to suppress a group of people, one of the things that goes first is their right to speak up and speak out, right? That's one of the first things that goes because lack of freedom of speech is what drives inequality. I can't even speak about what's happening to me. Um, and also, how do you interpret the right of, uh, to freedom of speech? So as I was saying earlier, I think the right of freedom of speech is not the right to say whatever you want, whenever you want, to whomever you want. People misinterpret that all the time. It's the right to say within the bounds and norms of this or whatever country or community you're talking about to express you another human being. Not if it makes someone unsafe. Not if it not if it creates a criminal act, right? There's certain things you just can't say or do. And so, you know, I think to me, the freedom of speech is within the agreed upon norms of this space, you get to express yourself. The agreed upon norms, that's a whole nother power, right? Because who's agreeing to what the norms of the space are? But it is definitely not the right to say whatever you want to whomever you want, whenever you want, without any accountability. That's not freedom of speech. Okay, so why do you think it's so important to carry on Dr. King's ideas, specifically that we are all created equal? Well, and I want to complicate it some because Dr. King was pulling from a document that says all men were created equal. And so there's some complications we need to do around Dr. King. And I love that brother. You know, he's the reason why I could even be on this Skype with y'all, right? That we can even be sitting and looking at an integrated group of young people. So I don't want to discount him. And at the same time, I don't want to say he believed in equality for all people, because I think there's some deeply sexist and homophobic things embedded in King himself and the group of people who were around him. So let's, let's not, comp not get uncomplicated with that. But why is it important, the equality of all people? Because we are all people. And so if you, I don't know, you know, what book y'all read and what religion y'all are a part of, but for me and my faith, the book that I read and believe in says that all people actually were. And so there was no one person who was in charge of another person in the original creation of people. This idea of I have power over you was something that we created. And, and it was not, in my opinion, the way that God intended for us to live. Should certain people have roles and responsibilities that might then compel them to direct other people in their roles and responsibilities that that's different and that human human you're not equal to me i am above you those are different things say to youth who don't think they have a voice that people will listen to to help empower them to speak up <clears throat> so i say to people who are not speaking up for themselves what is it costing you to not speak up? What are you gaining by not speaking up? And is that gain bigger than what you could gain if you did, right? We silence ourselves because we think it'll keep us safer. Are you really safer by being silent? Or are you simply allowing things to happen to you that you imagine grander, worse things are gonna happen if I say something? They could, but also it could be the end of your own degradation, the end of your own victimhood to speak out. And are you really living life? Are you living a life worth living if you're living a life that's silenced to the degree where you can't speak up about things that matter to you, right? Not that I'm suggesting people should end life. I'm saying people should speak up because that's why we were given the voice. People should speak up because that's what it means to live. People should speak up even when it might be harmful to you because somebody might come back with more power than you and try to shut you down, but still keep speaking because you know what, they're gonna do it anyway while you're silent. 
I think about interviewing an ex-neo-Nazi um, a couple years ago, probably about 2017. And what do white supremacists really want? And he said, they really want two things out of you, your silence and or your rage. If you rage against us, then you look like the animal we say you are. And if you're silent, then we can continue to do whatever we want to do without any kind of consequences. Mm -hmm. And so silence is really what allows your own dehumanization. You've got to speak up. What's it going to cost you? So this is our last question. Um, what steps can we take as youth in order to achieve Dr. King's dream in the future? So that's a great question. I think as young people, y'all have to make sure you are doing as you're doing today, as I'm seeing right now on this screen, sitting with people who are different from you in all any number of ways, like physically doing a check. Do I have friends who live in different neighborhoods from me or different races, different genders, different sexual orientations, different socioeconomic status? Am I surrounding myself with a diversity of people? And if I'm not, how can I reach that goal? That's the number one thing that I feel about Dr. King was he had this idea of if we got closer together in a community of people who are different from us, we will understand each other more and the world therefore will be better. So if you just do that. The other thing I think you do is you think about as a young person, when I'm in my space and people are in my space, how do they feel? Do they feel loved? Do they feel respected? Do they feel valued? Do they feel human? Do they feel equal? Because if I can do that in my space and the next person does that in their space, then we can transform the world. That's part of King's beloved community. I think young people can think about who am I responsible to beyond myself, bringing us out of our own narcissism to say, who do I care about so deeply that I would do for them as if I'm doing for me? And would I do it for a stranger I don't know? Do I love humanity at that level that I'm not going to walk past an injustice. Because remember, King said, an injustice to somebody somewhere is an injustice to everybody everywhere. So young people can start paying attention. Like, it might not be my fight, but it's going to be my fight because it's a human fight. I think if you can start to do that, then I think you shift the culture of humanity, right? Because people in my generation and the generation before me, we will be gone at some point. You will literally inherit the earth. What do you want to do with that inheritance? Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you for your time. It was nice meeting you. It was nice to meet you all as well. And the people I can't see, it was, I'm glad y'all were in the room. <laughs>